Hi everyone, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being a subscriber. As North Carolina is dealing with horrific aftermath of the hurricane, Florida is now preparing for a Category 5 Hurricane Milton with sustained winds of up to 180 miles per hour. It is absolutely horrifying. Milton is expected to make landfall on early Thursday morning. Some areas in Florida are forecasted to see storm surges of up to 15 feet, 1-5, 15 feet. Arguably, the worst part about knowing what is just hours away at this point is that the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, is running low on cash. This week, Bloomberg reports, back-to-back -back hurricanes set to strain FEMA as its funds run low. It is not surprising, then, that many Americans are now starting to question the reasons why we're sending $18 billion, with a B, $18 billion in 12 months to, quote-unquote, an ally in the Middle East, and then another $175 billion to Ukraine, while our direct national interests, our direct domestic national interests, are put on the back burner. It is a valid argument and it is a valid question to ask. Many of us know, or at the very least can guess, what the answer to those questions is. Bloomberg writes, the cash-strapped U.S. Federal Emergency Management Agency is said to be tested. It is said to be tested in the face of one of the strongest hurricanes by back-to-back -back major disasters as Hurricane Milton barrels towards Florida's Gulf Coast less than two weeks after the horrors in the southeast. A former deputy administrator at the U.S. Disaster Response Agency says this could result in a significant strain on FEMA's resources. A major hurricane hitting a highly populated area would certainly be a worse case. Very often I discuss how important it is to pay attention to global events that impact U.S. economy and how our foreign policy affects other countries, developing countries. I think it is very important to understand what's going on. The reason why I believe it's important and the reason why I personally take great interest in those things is because in many cases, you will be surprised what you'll learn and you will be even more surprised to find many connections between global affairs, economic events, and our everyday life. Unfortunately, this hurricane season is shaping up to be a tragic practical example of how an underfunded agency that is tasked to deal with national emergency situations is running low on funds while we allocate funds elsewhere. Now, why is it running low on funds? That is an excellent question to ask. First, let's talk about government accounting because as a CPA, I think that is a very important point to understand. That's what's driving budgets for the following year. Unlike the private sector, governments have this rule where they have to spend it or lose it. They will have to either spend it or lose the money that's been allocated to it in its budget. There is no carryover to the following year, and if they spend less now, then they will be allocated less the next time around. It is indeed a very odd logic. The other reason that results in underfunding of these agencies is the fact that alternative interests are prioritized. And I will just leave it at that. Another important point to make with respect to FEMA's budget that you likely won't hear anywhere else is that FEMA administers the shelter and service program. It means that it can, in theory, tap into funds that are allocated to programs within its jurisdiction to make up any shortages that it faces in other areas. I hope that makes sense. The Shelter and Services Program funding is part of the budget that is allocated by Congress to U.S. Customs and Border Protection. This means that there is a possibility, and we will have to see their financials to be certain, but there is a possibility that the funds originally allocated to one program could be used to satisfy deficits in the funding for another program. 
Congress provided FEMA a disaster relief fund with $20 billion in a temporary government spending bill lasting through December 20th. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, who directly oversees the agency, by the way, has warned that the agency does not have enough funds to make it through hurricane season. Okay, Milton is category five, and now we're hearing that the agency may not even have enough funds to make it through this season. The season's not even over. What happens if there's another hurricane? He says it still has enough money to meet immediate needs. Although that statement alone is questionable because it is not really quantifiable. What is it has enough? How much is enough? if we're facing these back-to-back -back disasters. Additionally, it is fair to be very skeptical of how prepared FEMA is, given that the storm may rank among the largest ever reinsurance losses. An interviewed founder of an insurance agency is quoted here. He says, if Milton hits the Tampa metropolitan area as a category four hurricane, we know that at this time, it is now a category five, it could lead to one of the biggest reinsurance losses events in history. So imagine the federal budget that will be needed to assist the displaced individuals, as well as to repair, if it is even possible to repair or to rebuild destroyed infrastructure, such as bridges, roads, schools, hospitals, other essential facilities. That likely won't be under FEMA's direct jurisdiction, of course, but FEMA will need to find ways, will need to find resources, financial resources, to deal with the emergency itself and with its aftermath. Now, do we have prominent leaders who are from the Carolinas who worked tirelessly to help the victims this past week? Let's see. Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina was unfortunately busy. He was on yet another trip, this time not to Kiev, but to the Middle East to support his friends there. Perhaps he'll visit the displaced and those needing assistance in North Carolina when he's back from his trip. Thanks for watching. I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that you learned something from it. Please remember to show your support, like, subscribe, and share. It means a lot to me. It goes a long way. For exclusive content, make sure that you check out my alternative social media channels. You will find them linked in the description below. And I'll see you back here tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.